Welcome firefighters. Whether this is your first time watching or, or you're a long time viewer, I'm sure glad you're here. So from now until the end of the year, every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, we're going to share crucial updates, short explainers, and ways you can take action and more. I hope you'll join us each week and share with your own friends and family what you've learned and what you're personally doing for the people and the planet. So let's get into it, okay? Today we're covering a topic that is so important when we talk about climate change. In fact, it's the most important thing we can talk about when we talk about climate change and how we as Earth's inhabitants can do better. We have to do better. The topic is fossil fuels. You know, it's amazing how many people don't really understand what fossil fuels are and how exactly they are harming us and the planet. I mean, we know them, we use them, but what are they really? And you know, here at Fire Drill Friday, we like to break it down so that we all really know what it is we're talking about. This not only helps our own understanding of what's going on, but it also helps when we talk to other people in our circles about fighting for a, a cleaner and healthier planet, right? And what better way to get back to basics than with the newest generation? So today we're going to answer questions about fossil fuels from some of our youngest firefighters out there. Are you ready? Let's take our first question. Are fossil fuels really made from dinosaurs? What are fossil fuels anyway? Oh, that's a great question, Martin. Thank you. When we say fossil fuels, we're just using a fancy word for oil, gas, and coal. These are types of energy that we use by burning. When they're burned, energy is released, and we use that to say to warm something, to make our cars run, or make electricity work. And we call them fossil fuels because they are what's left over of plants and animals and other things that lived a long, long time ago, similar to dinosaur fossils that we find, you know, buried deep under the ground. Oil and gas can be found deep under Earth's surface, especially under oceans and, and rivers. And see, wh when you combine pressure and heat, the fossils that used to be plants and animals are sort of cooked, and a thick liquid called oil is formed. And in some places, the cooking process continues underground until gas is formed. Now, in the mid-1800s, Humans drilled deep into the earth for the first time and oil came up. That was the beginning of what we call the Industrial Revolution, made possible by fossil fuels. What is actually happening is that we blow up a cemetery of prehistoric sea creatures in order to light their bodies on fire in power plants and car engines. And it's important to remember there's only so much oil in the ground, right? And one day we're going to run out. Are fossil fuels bad? Well, Thomas, fossil fuels have actually made possible things like trains and internal combustion engines and cars and, and manufacturing. In other words, they made progress possible. But about about 40 years ago, scientists working for fossil fuel companies discovered and they reported that burning these fossil fuels released carbon dioxide into the atmosphere that was going to severely damage and alter the climate, making parts of the planet impossible for people to inhabit. Think about that. People were told that long ago, 40 years ago, about the dangers of fossil fuels. But instead of turning to the alternatives like sun and wind for energy, the heads of the oil companies hid what their scientists were saying. They, they lied to us. And now, Thomas, fossil fuels are making our planet sick. You see, when we burn these things, carbon is set out into the atmosphere and it forms a blanket of pollution around the planet, which traps in heat. That's what's causing global warming and all the extreme weather that we're seeing, like wildfires and droughts and hurricanes. Who makes fossil fuels? Why do we let them do that? 
Well, Arden, fossil fuels, they already exist deep inside our planet, but big oil companies get them out of the ground through a process called drilling or called fracking in the case of, uh, of gas, where they dig deep into the earth, okay? And then they have to go through a special process called refining so they can use it in our cars and our homes and our schools. But taking fossil fuels out of the earth and burning them harms our planet, right? By polluting our air and our land and our water. Governments and politicians all over the world have allowed oil companies to take oil and gas out of the ground, often without even asking the families that lived there if it was okay. And over many years, we've become dependent on oil and gas and coal, and it's making us sick putting us in all kinds of danger and causing many species of animals to die off. You know, there are other cleaner ways that we can make energy to power our cars and homes, but big powerful companies don't want us to switch because they're making a lot of money selling us gas and oil and coal. What happens to the pollution from fossil fuels? Where does it go? Oh, that's a great question, Alice. When we burn fossil fuels, they release dangerous gases into the air, including a gas called carbon dioxide. And because of this, the amount of dangerous gases in our atmosphere, that's what we call the, the, the protective layer around our planet, has skyrocketed. These gases trap heat from the sun and make our planet change very quickly at levels that we haven't seen in millions of years. If we keep using fossil fuels, what will happen to the planet? Hi, Juniper. Thanks for asking this. If we keep using fossil fuels, we will contribute to change the climate on our planet. Climate change makes the weather more extreme. Storms are stronger, heat waves are hotter, droughts are longer and drier, and it also means more wildfires, floods, and wacky weather, which is dangerous for all living things on our planet, like humans, plants, and animals. If the planet keeps changing, what will happen to people and animals? Sorry to say it's not good news, Levi. In the Arctic and Antarctic, sea ice is melting as the planet warms and animals like polar bears are losing their homes. Not only that, but many animals and plants may just disappear forever because climate change is ruining the places that they live. And this is bad news for people too because the places we live are also changing. Melting sea ice, for example, makes water levels rise so that cities near the ocean are in danger of disappearing underwater. In many places in the world, it may become too hot to live or people may not be able to grow food where they live. What can we use instead of fossil fuels? Are we already starting to do that? I'm so glad you asked that, Stella. That's a great question. And luckily, there's a great answer. Scientists have been hard at work for decades creating better ways to power our world. Renewable energy, like energy from the wind and the sun, is much, much cleaner and doesn't release gases like carbon dioxide that trap heat and change our climate. This kind of energy is also called renewable because it can be used again and again. You know, they're not going to run out on us like oil and gas will. Since fossil fuels are going to run out eventually, we know that we need to switch completely to clean energy. But because of how bad fossil fuels are for our planet, we need to make that switch very quickly. And the good news is we are already using renewable energy like wind and solar to power some of our energy in homes and cars. The solutions are here now. But big oil companies have been actively trying to stop us from using renewables instead of fossil fuels. They spend millions of dollars trying to convince our politicians not to invest in clean energy and to keep giving them money to make and sell oil and gas instead. That's why people like us are coming together to make our voices louder than the fossil fuel companies. We can make changes in our own lives and use our power together to ask governments and companies to switch to renewable energy too. I want to help our planet. What can I do? My parents want to help too. What can they do? Oh, thank you for joining the fight, Nico. Fire Drill Fridays and climate heroes like you are working hard to make sure we act now to save our planet. 
There are so many ways to help tackle climate change from turning off the lights when you're not using them or taking a bike when you can instead of a car or putting solar panels on your home if that's possible for your family or switching to an electric car. You know, under President Biden, these things are becoming less expensive, more available. But it's not just up to us individually to stop climate change. We need companies to stop selling fossil fuel and look instead to transforming our energy supply. You know, we say that we're in a climate emergency because this is a problem that we need to solve right now. But don't worry, we already have the answers. It's about working together to make change happen. And I'm so glad you want to be part of this. Oh, I want to thank all of our young firefighters for your questions today. And to everyone watching, I, I hope you learned something new and now feel even more confident talking about fossil fuels with your friends and family. I always say to make change, we must take action. Well, now is the time. Visit FireDrillFridays.com to learn more and get involved. And if you've enjoyed today's explainer, please share it with your friends and family. The more we all know, the better prepared we'll be as champions for our communities and planet. Next Friday, I'll be paying a special visit to my friend, Lily Tomlin. And we'll be talking about how to make sure you and your friends are registered and ready to vote in the upcoming election. It's gonna be a lot of fun and one you won't wanna miss. Tune in at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, right here. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.